Indeed, all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, as we all know, we are in the month of Muharram, the first month of the Hijri calendar. And one of the things that we know about the month of Muharram is the day of Ashura, the 10th of Muharram, which was last week. And for those of us who were blessed enough to benefit from that day, uh, we benefited by fasting on that day or fasting on that day and combining it with the day before or a day after. All of this is from the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. But after the 10th, after the 9th, 10th or 11th passes, we tend to forget really the significance of what is it uh, that happened in this month and what was really the significance of fasting on that day. There are other historical significance incidents that happened throughout the history of, the, uh, of Islam on that, uh, on that day, but that is not the subject of today's talk. Today's talk is, inshallah, is in regards to, again, the day of Ashur. Yeah, we fasted, we benefited from it, the day is gone by now. But there are many, many lessons that are to be learned from it. First and foremost, the Prophet ﷺ, he indicated to us the reason why he wanted us to fast on that day. As you all know and you probably heard, it may have been addressed in previous khutbahs here, that when the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina, he questioned, he found some of the Jews that were there that was fasting and he asked them why is it that they were fasting and they told him we're fasting because on this day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Musa alayhi salam and his people from Fir'aun and his, and his army. So in regards to that, to show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are fasting. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied and he's, he told him that I have more right to Musa alayhi salam, I am more closer 
of Musa alayhi than you are. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa fasted and he commanded the Muslims to fast as well. This right here, brothers and sisters, goes right along with the fundamental belief of a Muslim. One of the core beliefs of Muslims. And that is that this religion, this way of life, this message of Islam is not a new message. As unfortunately it is propagated and sometimes even by Muslims. When others ask him, you know, can you tell me something about Islam? And the answer comes, oh, it was a religion founded by a person named Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about 1400 years ago in the deserts of Arabia. That's not true. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the final prophet and messenger in a list, in a long list of prophets and messengers that came before him whose message was the same as the message of the Prophet This is the proper answer. And this is what the Prophet is teaching us here as well. That we are more closer to Musa than you are. In beliefs. And we all know, we have this belief that no Muslim would be a Muslim. No matter how many times you say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah If you don't believe in Musa alayhi salam If you don't believe in Isa alayhi salam If you don't believe in Ibrahim alayhi salam If you don't believe in Yusuf alayhi salam If you don't believe in Yunus alayhi salam If you don't believe in all of the prophets and messengers That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us about and in the verse I have quoted here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us قُلْ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَيْنَا وَمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ وَالْأَسْبَاقِ وَمَا أُوْتِيَ مُوسَى وَعِيسَى وَالنَّبِيُّونَ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَحَدٍ مِنْهُمْ وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ We have believed in Allah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in what was revealed to us, and what was revealed to Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ismail alayhi salam, Ishaq, Yaqub, and their descendants, and what was given to Musa alayhi salam and Jesus, and to the prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them. And we are Muslims submitting to them. This is one of the lessons that can be learned from this. Not just we fasted because they were fasting. Or the Prophet ﷺ told us to fast and we're fasting. Yes, Alhamdulillah, we gain benefit from it. But one of the things that we can do is we can re-energize. Or re-evaluate our aqidah, our fundamental belief. And reaffirm this faith, this article of faith, and also tell others about it. That this religion is not a new religion, rather same fundamental message that all of the other prophets and messengers came with. Now when we look at the actual incident itself that the Prophet ﷺ refers to here, the story of Musa السلام, and Fir'aun. There are many, many lessons that can be learned from this. And as a matter of fact, again, I go back to the first point that I have mentioned here. That fundamentally it has been the same message that all of the other prophets and messengers came with. So much so that Musa salam's name and story is the most often told story in the Qur'an. Even more than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. Most often told story, different, different segments of his life, different lessons, different trials and tribulations that Musa alayhi salam went through. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us about in the Quran. So let us look at just a few lessons that we can learn from the life of Musa alayhi salam and hopefully we can implement them as well. First and foremost is the story of Musa alayhi salam and the people. The people who believed in Musa alayhi salam were few in number. Not a lot, a few in number. And they were very afraid of the situation that they were in. The might of Fir'aun, the power of Fir'aun, the, uh, the difficulties that he was making the, them go through. How hard he was making their life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about that in the Quran. 
He tells us, "Fama aman ali Musa illa zuriyatun min qawmihi ala khauf min Fir'aun wa malaihim an yaftirahum wa inna Fir'aun la alin fil ardi wa inna hu lamin al-musrifin." None believed in Musa alayhi salam except the offsprings of his people because of the fear of Fir'aun. The fear that they had of Fir'aun, the believing people in Musa alayhi salam were few in number. Now let us just look at this incident briefly that the Prophet sallallahu referred to in regards to how the people were saved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we all know, long story short, many of us know this story, probably in great detail. But I'm just going to refer to the highlights of the main story here where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that when the army of Fir'aun was after Musa salam and his people and they had reached the shores of the Red Sea and the people what they saw in front of them was truly horrifying was unbelievable it was a very difficult situation for them to be in physically as well as mentally and spiritually that in front of them they see the sea that they cannot go anywhere and behind them is an army chasing them with the intention of finishing them off once and for all. وَقَالَ مُوسَى يَا قَوْمِ إِن كُنْتُمْ آمَنْتُمْ بِاللَّهِ فَعَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُسْلِمِينَ Musa a.s. had always taught to his people that listen, you believe in me, you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you put your tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what I do and that is what I'm asking you to do as well. فَلَمَّا تَرَى الْجَمَعَانِ قَالَ أَصْحَابُ مُوسَىٰ إِنَّا لَمُدْرَكُمْ But when they were in this situation, the people said that this is it. This is it. Our end is near. We cannot go anywhere. We cannot go forward. We cannot go backward. If we go forward, the sea is in front of us. If we, go, if we turn around, the army is behind us. What are we going to do? It's over for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, the answer that Musa alayhi salam gave to the people. He told them, قَالَ كَلَّا إِنَّا مَعْيَ رَبِّي سَيَدِي That no, it is not over. Why? Inna ma'ya Rabbi sayadeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with me and He is going to guide me. He is going to make a way out of this situation that we are in. He's going to find a way out for us. Inna ma'ya Rabbi sayadeen. I have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with me and that is all I need. That is enough for me. I put my tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I put my faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is enough for me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us فَأُوحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَىٰ أَنْ إِضْرِبْ بِعَصَاكَ الْبَحْرِ فَانْفَلَقَ فَكَانَ كُلُّ فَرْقٍ فَكَانَ كُلُّ فِرْقٍ كَالتَّوْتِ الْعَظِيمِ وَأَزْرَفْنَا ثُمَّ الْآخِرِينَ وَأَنْزَيْنَا مُوسَىٰ وَمَعَهُ أَجْمَعِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we commanded Musa alayhi salam to strike the sea with his stick that he had and when he did that the sea split open made a path for the believers to make their way through it and cross it. And when the army of Fir'aun saw this, they chased them. And then when the Muslim, when the Muslims, the believers, the followers of Musa salam, they finished crossing it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the sea to go back to the way it was. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَأَنزَيْنَا مُوسَىٰ وَمَنْ مَعَهُ أَجْمَعِينَ We saved Musa salam and those who were with him. Now again, most of us probably have heard this story many times before. Now let us look at a few lessons that we can learn from this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed these verses, revealed these stories in the Quran for a reason. And one of the reasons is for us to draw lessons from it, learn lessons from it. It was revealed for the people of Mecca and Medina to read it and understand it and think about the generations that came before them what they went through and it is for the Muslims to read these verses until the end of times and draw lessons from it what are some of the things that we can learn from it? number one going back to what I talked about the believers in Musa salam were few in number and historically that is how it has always been 
Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam lived majority of his life in Mecca in a society that was majority non-Muslim. Even after the revelation, he lived in Mecca most of the time in Medina was the less time. Numbers don't mean anything. Numbers do not mean anything. We should never go for, mem uh, for numbers. That now we are so many, or now there are so few, what's gonna happen? Numbers never make the difference. Yes, it's always good to have it, but it's not the distinguishing factor. It does not make any difference. We find in the Quran numerous stories after story, story after story, story of Nuh alayhi salam, for example, who came after Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. He tells us, Qala Rabbi inni da'utu qawmi laylan wa nahara falam yazidum du'ai illa firara wa inni kullama da'utuhum li taghfira lahum ja'alu asabi'ahum fi adhanihim wa staghfaru siyabahum wa sar wa staghfaru istikbaru. That I invited my people day and night, night and day, but they didn't listen to me. And every time I used to invite them, they used to not only turn their back on me, they used to stick their fingers in their ears so they did not have to listen to my message. Nuh alayhi salam, who lived for hundreds of years that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about in the Quran. But in the end, the believing people were very few in them. Not a whole lot. Similarly, you look at the stories of all the other prophets and messengers, you will find that the numbers really do not mean anything. It is all up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How much is your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Which brings us to the second point. Having tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At this trying time for Musa alayhi salam and his people, when they see that in front of them there's no way out, behind them there's no way out, Musa alayhi salam teaches the people a very important lesson. He tells them, Qala kalla inna ma'ya rabbi sayyadeen. Do not worry. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to show me a way out of this. He is with me. Why is he saying this? Because he has full and complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, we as Muslims, it is mandated from us. It is demanded from us. It is part of our belief that we must have full and complete faith and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever is destined to happen is going to happen. Good and the bad, everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we see these different situations and oftentimes either it is our own iman which is weak, which leads us to making decisions that may not be the best of decisions or the society that is telling us, oh yeah, you know, if you do this, you know, you're going to look too much of a Muslim. Don't do that. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, you're practicing too much. You got to be moderate in everything. These kinds of things you hear from the society. Why are they telling you this? And they'll tell you that too. Oh, we don't want to offend others. Or, you know, what are other people going to think about us? What are they going to say? And they want you to be scared. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, إِنَّمَا ذَلِكُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ يُخَوِّفُ أَوْلِيَاءَ فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِي إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ They want you to be afraid of shaitan and his followers. They want you to be afraid of shaitan and his followers and his, and, and, and his associates. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِي إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Do not be afraid of them. But be worried about me, fear me, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has created you and I, who has created everyone, who has created everything in the world. In kuntum mu'mineen. If you are believers, you put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You put your faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You do your part and you leave the rest in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another lesson that we can learn from this is that the truth will always prevail over falsehood. Sooner or later, it will happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, وَقُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَزَهَقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُقَ That the truth has come and the falsehood will vanish, will vanish, and the truth will always prevail. One thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't tell us about is the time frame, when it will happen. It will happen, it is no, there is no doubt about it. 
that if you may be going through a difficult period, or if the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, is going through a challenging time, as it is today, as we all know, it is temporary. It is not permanent. The truth will always prevail over falsehood. But when it will happen, not when we want it to happen, but when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows it is best for it to happen. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to, he could have saved Musa alayhi salam and his people. He could have already, for example, parted the sea for them to cross, but he didn't. He wanted to show to the people, Musa alayhi salam, that you do your part and you leave the rest in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You take your stick, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded him and you strike the sea with the stick. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you leave it to the rest. You leave it the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do your part and leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to do. That this assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come. No doubt about it. But when it will come, it will come at a time which is best that he knows. And one of the things that we can do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us when we are in these difficult situations, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ Have patience and seek help in patience and salah. بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Be patient and offer salah. As much as possible, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will assist you. But only when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that it is the time for him, when the time is right for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist you. So brothers and sisters, these are some of the lessons that we can learn from the story of Musa alayhi salam and the people of Musa alayhi salam and Fir'aun and the different trials and tribulations that they went through and that we may be going through on an individual level or on a community level and even on a global level. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and guide us and make it easy for us to be on a surat al-mustaqeem. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barik ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam wa bi rahmatika ya rahman rahim wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما مر اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم اما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القران المجيد بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين خصوصا خليفه رسول الله سيدنا ابو بكر الصديق رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى امر المؤمنين سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى امر المؤمنين سيدنا عثمان بن عفان رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى امر المؤمنين سيدنا علي بن ابي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى بقية تمام العشرة المبشرة وتمام اهل البيت صلاة وسلاما دائما متلازما الى يوم الدين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر اعداء الدين اللهم انصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واجعلنا منهم واخذل من خذل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجعلنا منهم اللهم انصر الاخوان المستضعفين في كل مكان خصوصا في سوريا وفي كشمير وفي برما وفي يمن وفي فلسطين وفي الصين وفي كل مكان يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر الاخوان المجاهدين الذين يجاهدون في سبيلك في كل مكان خصوصا في سوريا اللهم اغفر لجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك مولانا سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا رب العالمين عباد الله رحمكم الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله اكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون اقيموا الصلاه